welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we have another episode in the continuing saga of web DRM. And uh, this is an interesting one as Google sort of kills web DRM. But unlike the other things Google likes to take behind the shed and uh, uh, off and uh, bury in a shallow grave back there, uh, they're deciding on this one to kind of shift the focus while telling everybody, sure, we're ending this because we hear your criticism, but we're not really ending it. We're just sending it in certain places and certain ways. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. First, as a summary, I released this video a while back. This is three months back. Talk about the web DRM. Uh, this video here got 3,000 views where we talked about the details and how Google wanted to make a web-based DRM in the form of what was called an attestation server. So you request a website and any website that is file filing onto this, um, this standard, there's a third party attestation server that the website first goes in queries to make sure that the environment, i.e. your browser, your phone, your device, is exactly where they want. So, you know, unaltered, exactly where they want it, um, all sorts of... Um, all sorts of fun stuff like that. And then it sends the signal back and says yes, and then it will load the content. Now, Google already does this on Android devices in the form of the uh, the Play Verification API, where many banking apps will not work if they're using this if you have a rooted phone or a lineage phone without Google Play services, which is in and of itself a bunch of nonsense and why you should not use a banking app. It requires them to ping Google servers to make sure that your banking app works. Hmm, I don't think so. Uh, but that is how this works. Now, Mozilla and Brave both responded. This is the video that went viral a few months ago. We had 118,000 views on this one. And uh, Google and Brave both said, well, are you nuts? And so that's really what they did there. And uh, you can kind of see uh, you can kind of see what um, uh, what was going on. The the uh, creator of the standard responded as well. We had another video on that one. Again, that one didn't get as many. And speaking of videos, it didn't get as many views. If you don't watch this video from uh, just on Wednesday, just a couple days ago after I'm releasing this, um, this is a really, really important video. And Google kind of completely suppressed it. The conflating privacy and security. They are not the same. Hmm. Maybe it's just a really bad thumbnail. I don't know. Um, but uh, Google responds <clears throat> not in any official way, but just as a little side note. They have not said anything one way or the other, but in this little article here about increasing trust for embedded media, they very quietly mention, yeah, we're not going to do that with DRM, um, except we're going to do something similar to it on Android devices. So I thought that we should go over this. And uh, this is literally the only place that they have mentioned this. We've heard your feedback. The web environment integrity proposal is no longer being considered by the Chrome team. In contrast, um, the Android web media view integrity API is now narrowly uh, is narrowly scoped. So what they did is they took the standard and the ideas that they had and they created this new one, Android web view media integrity API. What this is going to do is it's going to make it a lot harder for you to root your phone or install ad blockers or other things if the app chooses to use this i.e. if your banking system chooses to use the google play api which is uh, what they generally already do uh, this, though, is going to have a broader case than just that API, and this is going to relate to any media being displayed on a website, uh, which uh, the website embedded in the app. Because the way you put an app together, you know, a lot of the apps you use on your phone, you can probably ditch the app and use the mobile version of the, the website with a basic browser, which is a way better option for you. Uh, but that being said, uh, in this case, what they're doing is they're building an app which utilizes these standards. And then what happens as they utilize these standards is that... Um, they can now control everything that goes on in the app. So it moves this beyond something used for banking into hopefully, according to Google, much more applications beyond that. 
And so that's what they're doing. So let's go ahead and have a look at uh, how this is going to work. So WebView is a powerful and flexible API that Android developers can use to embed media in their apps and continually improving security and privacy protections. Uh, I think they're going to use this as a means to do some uh, some ad blocking uh, things. Basically, it's doing the same thing the attestation server does, but this server here is going to say, "Hey, have you modified your system in any way? Have you blocked the ads in it? Have you, you know, whatever it happens to be?" So they do talk about the Play Integrity API. This is the one that is used for uh, banking stuff, and then there's the Firebase App Check, which preserves user privacy while enabling developers to verify their apps server requests. Requests. Uh, so today they're able to pass these information. Now they're using that web integrity API. They're ditching it from the global plan and putting it instead just into the Android plans. So um, it works effectively the same way. If you'll remember the other video, then uh, this actually has a few more steps. Let's see. I should have the uh, I should have a picture of the thread in here. Yep, here it is. All right, so here is what this guy looks like. So you'll see it's a very similar thread. It's just much, um, it's just a little bit larger. So in this case here, we have your website. You go to the, the website. The individual user is pinging on the web client. The web client does a test to the attestation server. The attestation server goes back to the web client, and then that is going to restore back and say, yes, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and then this over here is how this is working on Android. You'll see there's a few more steps. Effectively, it works the same way. So this is Bob, uh, and he opens the app. I really think some of it is this, hey, Bob opens an app. So Bob opens an app. The Android app code now launches the web view. So every time you open the app, that's going to make a ping to this media integrity server, which, of course, is Google-owned. Um, maybe other places as well. Maybe it's a third party. The API allows each app to in order uh, to run it. So the app must ping home in order to run. So if you have an app that must ping home in order to run, you have an app that has to have an always on Internet connection. There is no more privacy because all of that can be traced back. So the Android web view uh, goes and requests the media. So the media comes back and says, well, I want to do an integrity check. So now the Android WebView app goes out to the integrity server. And then the integrity server returns. This goes back to the, uh, to the uh, place hosting the media. This returns the media back to the app. And then this now goes back to the app code. And then now it finally, it's, it's the media to Bob. So the idea here that they want to do is they want to be able to make sure that the media is not being tinkered with in the middle. On the positive, this is going to prevent a man in the middle type attack. On the negative, it's going to prevent you from interrupting that with an ad blocker or anything else that you want to do. In other words, taking away control that you have on the app on your very own device, utilizing an always on web integrity server that is either run by Google or by whatever company. Maybe this is the ad serving company. Um, you know, the app will just stop working if it can't ping to the ad server. There you go. How's that for fun? We've seen websites do that one before. The new Android Web Media Integrity API will give embedded media providers access to tailored integrity response that contains a device and app integrity verdict. So they can be looking at your device every single time you boot it. That can ensure their streams are running in a safe and trusted environment, regardless of which app store the embedded app was installed from. These verdicts are simple, low entropy metadata about the app and device and don't contain any user or device identifiers. So they're measuring if your device has been modified without measuring your device identifiers. Hmm. Okay. I believe you. Fear not. Unlike apps and games using the Play Integrity API, media providers will not obtain the app's Play licensing status, and apps will also be able to exclude their package name from the verdict if they choose. The goal for the API is to help sustain a thriving and diverse ecosystem of media content in Android apps 
by preventing you from blo- oh wait I'm sorry uh, and inviting media content providers to express their interest so you can click this link it just takes you to a form on Google where an app developer can gain early access in order for testing so yes they are killing the web DRM proposal but they are now cramming it into uh, an embedded media proposal instead effectively utilizing the same technology. So that's very interesting, and uh, I'm curious what you guys think about all that. So let me know your thoughts about this in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.